In my last video, I showed you how I would utilize OpenAI's Assistant API for creating any custom AI agent. And in my case, I used it to create a thumbnail rater for my YouTube thumbnail. After that, while I continued developing my first task, I thought, you know what, maybe let's give Cursor AI a chance. Cursor is the first AI code editor that uses native AI assistants. I mean, sure, we have Copilot and things like that, but these are VS Code plugins. This editor right here is a VS Code fork and integrated native gen AI in ways that would be impossible via plugins. And that's about Cursor, but why am I talking about this? When I tried out coding with Cursor, it really blew my mind how efficient you can be with this gen AI assistant coding editor. So I thought, you know what? Let's try something. I will try to reproduce my whole existing SaaS application, better thumbnail, in only one hour of coding with Cursor AI. I will not count on the time that I need to click around in the UIs to create databases or assistants and API keys, but only the time I'm purely coding. So let's see how far we can get with one hour of my time and the timer starts now. So this is what we want to recreate. We have a get started button. When you click on this one, it will open a login or sign up window, but let's go back. So as you can see, you upload a thumbnail. We uploaded the thumbnail and now it's time to submit the video title in the description. Open AI Assistant. We will submit the rating and now it will be processed and sent to Open AI. The image will be uploaded. The color is pretty good. Obviously, I used my own SaaS product to improve my thumbnail before uploading it. And this is what we're going to try to reproduce. So the first thing we will do is create a new Next.js application using ShadCN for the UI components. ShadCN is something like a UI library like Bootstrap, Bulma, things like that. But the difference is that the components are loaded via NPM, but after that, you have it in your code base. You don't have to download the whole stuff. You don't have to integrate the whole package into your application, but you only get what you want from it and you can customize it afterwards if you desire to. So let's do that. We can go to the installation guide. Go to Next.js and this is the command we can use for creating a Next.js application with ShadCN on default. Would you like to start a new Next.js project? Yes. Better thumbnail Genii. Which style would you like to use? Let's choose New York. It's a little bit more condensed and looks very modern. The base color, let's go with sync. We want CSS variables for theming and now it should finish it up. Awesome. I already installed the cursor CLI so I just enter cursor and then better thumbnail nail and it will automatically open it in cursor for me. Here we can see the cursor UI. It's basically Visual Studio Code, as I told you, but looks a little bit more sleek. What we have here is the app folder. We have a layout and we have a page. So let's run this project first to see what we will get out of the box. And we got our Next.js application, but this is obviously not what we want. So let's get rid of all the boilerplate first and create our custom application. I don't want any CSS in here. What you can already see here is that by hitting tap, we have already a code completion suggestion here. Pressing tap again, will just apply the changes. So next up, we want to customize the layout. We have the children here. The children will be everything that is inside this page TSX, which is just a hello world heading right now. We should have an empty page right now. Let's refresh this and here we go. Hello world. So what we want to have next is a navigation bar. Now we will see the magic of AI. Let's say I want a component that's holding my navigation bar. We have the app in here. Let's create a new folder and call it components. Inside this components, I will create a file called navbar.tsx. And from this point, I will simply do one thing. I hit command K and I will prompt the instructions for the complete navbar to cursor. You can see here it is using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. You can choose other models as well, but I think Claude is very efficient for this one. So let's start up with create a navigation bar with a branding logo on the left end and two buttons pro and login on the right end and you hit enter and cursor starts to generate your code. The nicest thing about it is that this is now in your application, but as you can see here, it is displayed to you like a git diff, so you can still remove it later and you will see what was changed. In this case, it's all new, so 
that's pretty simple. And we can see the first problem in here. We don't have that module, right? I could just go on and install the chat CN button on myself because I know that this is the problem in here. But let's try to do as much as possible with cursor. When hovering over this, you can say fix in chat with AI. Let's do that. It gives me the context in here and it says you should install chat CN UI latest app button. What you can do as well is hit command K while you're focusing the terminal and just say what you want to do. Install chat CN button. Do it. And here we have the command for it. Let's execute it. We want to install this. Yes. And this is the first problem. Let's see. It mistakenly tried to install it from chat CN UI, but it should actually be chat CN. So I'll do it on myself. And now we want to integrate this navbar into our layout. Let's go to app layout. And now cursor already understood the assignment. But here's the problem. Cannot find name navbar. I could fix this now in the chat. But when I go up to the imports, we can see cursor already knows what's the problem, what you want to do next. So let's add that. And now let's see how the page looks like. Let's reload this and we got our nav button here. This is a little bit broken. Let's fix that. We will add a public folder for the public sources. We will paste our icon in here and call it logo.png. In the nav bar, we already got this one. And now let's see how this looks. Let's reload it. And we got our logo in here. Let's rearrange this a little bit. Let's see, 44 should be fine. And this seems to be fine. And let's now say I want the branding name of the application too. Let me just add this one, add text to the right of the logo for brand name. And we got our brand in here. Let's rename this to better thumbnails. Awesome. We got our pro button. We got a login button. There's nothing that is behind these buttons yet, but this will change. Let's accept this and maybe add some rocket emoji here. Awesome. All right, we got our nav bar. What we want to have in the middle is our feature, right? So I will add a new folder from nails and a page TSX in the root of this folder. And now I don't want to code anything. Create a thumbnail component with plain hello world content in it. Awesome. What's that? That's a little bit confusion in here. We will just remove it and we got our thumbnails page. Let's add this into the page in here. We will return Cursor already knows the thumbnails page and we need to import that too. What's the problem here? Thumbnails page is not correct. Okay, we can find that. Let's fix it in the chat. It says we should create the file in the same directory, but we don't want to do that. I don't want to create it in the same directory. Fix it in another way from you, please. All right, I got the issue. So the problem is that Next.js doesn't like export defaults in this place. So we will just remove this one go back to our root page and everything is resolved. You have to put in a little bit of work. It's not like the AI will code you the whole project, but it still gives you a tremendous boost. So let's see how this looks. All right, we got our thumbnail content in here. Let's go on with the root of our application. So we got a navbar, we got our children in here and we want a footer too. So let's do that. The components, we will add a new file, call it footer tsx and give the command to create a footer component with legal stuff like terms cookies privacy at about section for the company so let's generate it all right this looks awesome and now we have to include this footer in our layout and we already know what to do here so we have to import it too and it is happening right out of the box. This looks good so far, but it's misplaced. I will fix that on myself. We have to put the Nafpa and the children into a separate section. Oh, it already knows what I want to do. That's crazy. With min age screen, we will make sure that this is definitely the height of the screen and the footer will be scrollable. We can scroll. Here's the footer and we have about us, a contact and the legal text. This will link out to terms, but there's nothing there yet. Go back to cursor and create these. We could do it all over the chat, but I think we shouldn't get too lazy. So we will create a new folder like terms, privacy, cookies. We will prompt create a cookie and consent page. We'll do the same for privacy. We don't even have to wait. This will just go on and we can take care of the other files while it is creating the code. Create privacy, create terms and condition component. Let's see if the cookies are looking good. I'm pretty sure it will be. So let's accept that. The privacy is done. Let's accept that. The terms are done. Let's accept that. So let's reload the page. We got our page. We click on terms of service and we have our terms of service in here. Let's go back. Privacy policy and the cookie policy is there as well. We have our 
navigation bar, we have our footer, we have our space where we want to display our feature and make it interactable. So what's next? Let's focus on the feature itself now because this is the most interesting part. At this point, we are sure that Cursor can also add authentication and things like that, but let's focus on the hard stuff, recreating the logic of my application. Back to Cursor. What I want to do here is to add a drop zone in a square shape for uploading files and store the file in state variable. We will submit it. We can see the git diff. This is added. This was there before. And we can see what's new and what's already existing. Let's accept this one because it looks nice. It messed up the imports a little bit. Let's add them here. So we have to install React Drop Zone. Let's do that. And we got our React Drop Zone package added to the project. Let's reload it. And there's nothing there. Now I don't want to generate code, but I want to talk to my assistant about the existing code and why it isn't working as I intended to. Open a new chat. We will give the page TSX of the thumbnails page as a context for this conversation. And we will ask the AI assistant, why can't I see the drop zone? And that's a question. The use client is misplaced. So let's move it up here and try it again. Reload the page and we'll get a drop zone in here. Nice, but it's really ugly place. So move everything to the center. Now it will show me what the solution would look like and I can just click apply in here and it will automatically apply these changes. When I like what I see, I can hit command enter or I can accept it in here. But let's try it out now and accept later. So there's an issue, server component type undefined. The call stack is something like this. Okay, let's see what's the problem. It's okay, clearly it messed up this default function here. So let's clear this one up again and it's working. Awesome. Let it stick to top of view because I find it too much centered in the vertical and it once again messed up this one. Let's make clear that we don't want that from now on. Don't generate export default function export the function without the default for all future generations. So now it should respect my decision. And after we apply this on the entire file, we can see that it works its way through it and we are good to go. Awesome. Let's accept that and add a little bit more to the component. Add input field for video title and store in a state variable. It will create the recommendation for me. Let's just apply it. Awesome. But it used the regular input I wanted from Shetzian. Always use Shed components. Let's accept and apply this one. We have to install our Shetzian components here. Let's reload the page. Awesome. It stores the video title in the video title state. Now add text area. Now what I did now is leaving out the fact that I want to store it into a state variable. Let's see if understands it well enough to do it on itself. I wasn't disappointed. We got our state variable right here. Let's see. Awesome. We got our video description right here. And now we want a submit button. Add a submit button, which is disabled as long as the file title and description are not filled. It will create our submit button and a handle submit function already out of the box. That's nice. We'll accept and apply to entire file. Now we can try it again. We have a submit button here. It is disabled. We enter something in here. Description, blah, 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 and upload a file. Let's upload some thumbnail and the submit button is enabled. But what I don't like about this is that we can't see the file that is uploaded. So let's fix that. Add a preview of the uploaded file. We will apply it, reload the page, add another file. This is not what I had in mind exactly. The preview should also display the image file. Maybe I wasn't specific enough with the file upload that it should be an image. Wait, we have an issue in here. Let's fix this in the chat. All right, accept that. Seems like we're good. Let's upload another file and we got our file in here. Awesome. Let's try to bring a little bit more logic in here. We got our file, we got our video title, we got our description and the handle submit function, which will get called on click of the button. And now we want to use the chat 
to create our API call to the backend. In handle submit, make a call to the server via post with the title, description, image file, body payload to the slash API hash rate point. It will create new form data based on the title description and image. It will use the fetch API to make a post request to the API rate route and await the response and log it there. Pretty solid, let's apply it. Now we need the route. Let's go back to manual development. We will create a folder that's called pages and inside of this pages folder, another folder that's called API. And here we can do what we can do best. We will create the rate endpoint and tell cursor to create our logic. Create endpoint which accepts Posts including title, description, and image. Let's accept that. So hover over this, fix this in AI chat, apply whatever it thinks we need to do in here. Let's fix this one too, accept this. We have a problem in here. Let's fix this in AI chat. So it tells me that I should install formidable, formidable, right? Let's click run in here and it will run it in my terminal. It will stop my current execution and run it in the terminal. Ah oh, man, that's awesome. All right, so this should work now. We have an issue in here. I don't even want to think about it. I will apply that in here and accept it. And now let's try to test our endpoint. We got our front end. Now let's upload an image, a video title, most hated man in AI, the resentment of the AI community, send this to the backend and see what we will log in here. Submitting the object with file, description and title, but it doesn't seem to be successful. Let's see. Oh, this doesn't seem to be used right now. What happened in here? Where's my button? It's using handle submit. Oh, what the hell? Oh, wait, it mistakenly put the handle submit logic into the drop zone component. Let's get rid of this. But first, let me just copy this one and put it into another component. Let's call it drop zone TSX. Add this one here, add all of this in the chat, apply it. It is generating the code to resolve it. We can cancel it and apply it again. So this fixes that one and use callback. What's the problem in this? So we can accept this one, apply it. Here's the issue too. We can accept and apply it. It should be fine. Let's go back to our thumbnails page. We accept this one and we have this file preview. Is this even used here? Yes, it is. Okay. The drop zone component has an issue because what we will do now is check if cursor will understand it. Yeah. Cursor understands the assignment. The drop zone component has an issue. We don't export it. Accept. All right. We don't need that here anymore. And also we don't need these in here. Let's fix this up. Video title, video description, reload the page, enter thumbnail, enter video title, description, submit it. And we have an error. Let's see what the error is. So there's a problem with the formidable library. Let's create a new chat for this class here and just copy this, paste it in here and see what cursor has to say about it. We got it that there is an issue with formidable and there's a potential fix for it. So let's accept and apply it to the entire file. Did it change anything? It wants me to install the formidable latest package. Let's do that too. So let's try it again, submit it. And we still have the same problem. I resolved it all myself. I have this parse form function calling the right method method of formidable to parse the fields into some object that we return in here and we get the fields and the files from it. We get the title from it, the description and for thumbnail we get the array of files which will be one but still it can be extensible for later and get the thumbnail file out of it and lock all of this. We see here the title has been locked, the description has been locked and the image seems to be undefined but let's see what we can do about this. So the next thing we want to do is to bundle this information and send it to the OpenAI assistant I created to get a rating that is working for this prompt. What we will do is create a new lib in here. Let's call it OpenAI TS and we will prompt it to create a lib for OpenAI to upload a file to OpenAI file system purpose vision, a thread with a custom prompt like create the thumbnail for title, description and the image file, create run on this thread, poll it to be available, send a message and retrieve latest response this is a mouthful. Let's see how good this is actually generating the code for what I just told it. But let's just accept this and browse through it. What we are doing here is rate thumbnail. We get the title description and the file. It creates a file upload. This didn't work, but that's not a problem. And also this won't work out of the box because it's not the file buffer right now, but we'll tackle this later. Open I better assistance create name thumbnail rater. This is not what I want from it. Let's chat about it. Don't create an assistant. I already have one. 
one in place. Let's apply this one. Seems fine. Now we do the file upload with vision purpose. We have the assistant ID. We'll get it from the environment variables. We create a thread, have the role user in here. Oh, I even forgot about this. So that's nice. Write the thumbnail for this title and this description. The thumbnail image file ID is this one. That's not really what we want here. This won't work. Let's just complain about it. <laughs> I love Gen AI. All right, accept it. This looks a lot better. I think that won't do the trick, but let's do it on our own. It will be something like this. And now we got the assignment right. So seems to be fine. I will add this and this to an environment variable after I installed the OpenAI dependency. Let's make this better. Use create and poll for it. Cannot find name create and poll. Use create and poll for the run. Maybe I messed up with the context window. No, it's not working. That's really weird. All right, so after a few more attempts, we have our working solution right here. And now we have to call this. We go back to the endpoint and start a new chat. Call rate thumbnail. Accept it. What's the problem in here? Lib thumbnail writer. It's like, nah. The thing is, it created this import, but it already knows that that's wrong and suggests me the right one. So yeah, I think it's fine. Fix this in the chat, apply it. What the hell? All right, reject it. Sometimes it feels like the chat is not really the same as the auto-completion in here. Auto-completion clearly knows, the chat doesn't. Maybe because I gave it this file as a context and it doesn't look anywhere beyond this file. That could be the case. Either way, replace it in here. Let's see what the server response is. All right, we got an invalid request from OpenAI itself. So the problem is that it somehow messes up the file upload because we don't enter a buffer in here. So let's fix that. Go to the place where we call it, create a new chat about this file, create buffer from image and pass to rate thumbnail. Let's apply that, try that once more. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this didn't work out as I expected. It ended up in a huge debug session, which I don't want to put into this video. It took about one additional hour. And so it gets clear that it is not possible to recreate this right here in one hour with only using cursor. Of course, we could recreate this site, but in this video, I just tried to prove if it is possible by relying fully on cursor or not. I think it's still amazing how far we can get in such a short time. The big struggle is the same as that of these language models. When it comes to non-popular third-party API integrations, they have a rough time in assisting you developing these systems. I think the best way to utilize cursor is to create your own applications and have a co-pilot sitting next to you, creating awesome UIs and asking it for best practices when it comes to new challenges in your backend. I'm pretty sure that I personally will still use Cursor for my projects, but rather as an amplification of my skill set than a complete builds everything out of the box solution. See you in the next one.